This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning proudly announces that IT Pro, formerly IT Pro TV, joins its audit, cyber, and IT learning solutions. Join a community of learners who access more than 6,800 hours of IT courses to better their organizations. Visit acilearning.com and give your IT team superpowers with ACI Training. One of the things we got a lot of emails about, spanking me badly of, Oof. because I did not give enough love to one password. We talked about leaving LastPass. And I think by now most of us understand that LastPass has mishandled this breach. They knew about it earlier. There you go. I love that. Thank you. They, they put the email in. Uh, they knew about the breach um, in July, mm -hmm. they said at the time, oh, we don't think anything important was stolen. And then by December 23rd, two days before Christmas, that's always a bad sign when a tech company puts out a press release two days before Christmas. You know they're trying oh, to hide bury it. it. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to bury it. They said, oh, well, well you know, actually, the, the vaults were, somebody stole all the vaults, a backup of the vaults. They got it all. That's as bad as you can get. Now, the issue, though, really is the vault that you, you know, your LastPass vault or your 1Password vault or your Apple Keychain or your Bitwarden vault or your RoboForm, whatever the password manager, those are always encrypted in such a way that they're not just, there's not just text in there, not your passwords anyway. It turns out LastPass, there was a lot of text about what sites you visited, what sites you had passwords for, things like that, but which they should not have allowed. But never, nevertheless, your, your login and password was encrypted. And so the bad guy would have to guess your master password. But there were two problems with that. One, most people don't use good last, you know, master passwords. So if your password was, you know, password one, two, three, the bad guy's going to be able to crack that very, very oh. fast in milliseconds, yep. nanoseconds. Uh, the other thing is they do have a system, all password managers do, for re-encrypting over and over passwords to make it even harder to brute force it. Uh, they call it a key derivative function, PBKDF. And uh, there's other ways to do that. In fact, uh, maybe sometime we'll talk about that because there are better ways to do that. But most password managers are using PBKDF too. Uh, it turns out when Steve found this out last week, this was a big revelation. LastPass has not mentioned this. Many, many people, including many of our security now listeners, those are the most secure people in the world, had a iteration number, a PBKDF2 iteration number that was very low, one. So we combine that with a guessable password and surprisingly large number of guessable means they had zero security so those people especially your information is kind of out there now over time LastPass turned that number up to 500 uh to 5000 most recently it's 100100 it could be even higher uh i went into bitwarden turned my pbkdf2 my iterations up to 2 million without any Oof. problems owasp recommends like 300,000. I think it was, yeah, around 300,000. Turn it higher. The only disadvantage to having a higher number is it'll take a little bit longer the first time you download your password vault into your device to open it. A second or two. Big deal. Okay? Anyway, Pat, LastPass had not updated those old passwords. They also had old passwords stored in a format that wasn't very good, a codebook format that wasn't very good. So there were a number of issues with that vault. So, and the fact, the biggest issue is they didn't tell anybody. They, they still haven't said much. We don't know when the backup kit was from. We don't know a lot of things. So a lot of people are moving off LastPass. I showed you how to export. It's very easy last week. I didn't actually say which password manager you should go to. I think Dashlane is very good. I think 1Password is very good. I think Bitwarden, our sponsor, is very good. And there are others. <laughs> I saw your toot on Mastodon. Which is, by the way, the equivalent of a tweet on Twitter, except <laughs> yeah, better. Translate. I, yeah. <laughs> I saw your tweet on Mastodon saying, well, yeah, I use that one password. I just didn't want to interrupt Leo. Well, good. For 10 years. That's a perfectly good password manager. But then I got a lot of people because I had said on uh, Twit last Sunday, um, you know, I was talking about two-factor and Doc Rock said, well, what about this secret key, uh, this agile keychain one password uses that that makes it more secure right and i kind of poo-pooed it let me explain that because a lot, a lot of people said well you leo you shouldn't have done that so one password does something of interest they add a second in effect a second password 
that they generate numerically. Actually, your phone or device generates numerically. One password doesn't have access to it to unlock your vault. Is two better than one is the question. And the answer is complicated, of <laughs> course, but I'll try to simplify it. Do you, you don't even use it, do you? I guess if it's built in to the... I mean, it is. Well, here's, it adds some inconvenience. Okay. So you would know if you use it because you have to you have to keep track of that file okay. that has that secret number. And when you use a new device, you have to transmit it to the new device. Oh, it's that. It's okay, that. then yes, I do use that. So that's good. Mm -hmm. It adds some inconvenience. Of course, there's always this trade-off between security and convenience. It also... Uh, it's costs more. You now have to pay for a subscription to LastPass to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has a sexy name. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my my spidey sense, when I see sexy names, when I see marketing terms and they cost more, I always say, well, okay, let's talk about what it does. So it is valuable in one particular case. And it's maybe the reason you should recommend 1Password to your family members who are less sophisticated. If your master password is bad... It's a good password that will backstop it. So if you're using password 123 on 1Password, hey, good news, there's a second password that's strong that was generated mm -hmm. automatically. You don't have to remember it, but you do have to store it. You can't lose it. Mm -hmm. So that's another potential problem. Here's the real question. If you are a smart person who listens to our shows and you have a very good master password, does that second password make you more secure? I would say no. This much, a little bit. No. Because your master, if you have an infinitely hard to crack master password, does it matter that there's a second one? No. Right. So you adding inconvenience and cost for something you could handle yourself. Mm -hmm. So the re but now this is why it's good for Aunt Maud, because Aunt Maud's gonna use her birth date, her cousin's maiden name, her dog's name and her dog's yeah. name, which is not a good password. And so she's backstopped. So one password probably is a good choice, except for they have to maintain this separate file. They can't lose it, which is even that's a problem even for me. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is it doesn't matter what password manager you use. You do not need this magic agile keychain second password. You need a strong master password. And that means it can't be obvious. It, it should be as random as you can make it and still memorize it. It should be long. Mine, I just counted, was what, 31 yeah. characters? It should be long. And those that combination makes it impossible to break. That plus a good high PBKTF2. Mm -hmm. So if you do all that, I don't think you need to pay extra for the extra security that 1Password gives you. And I don't think the inconvenience it, it, it creates is worth it. it. It's actually a disadvantage. But it does put more burden on you to have a good password and your family members who maybe aren't very good. Encourage them not to have passwords that have English words in them. We were talking on Tuesday with security. Now Steve was explaining what entropy is. Ent the more random the password is, the more entropy it has, the harder it is to guess. What it means is that the third character in your password is in no way related to the second or the th or the fourth, mm -hmm. you can't in you can't narrow down what the third is based on what the second was. So if you use an English word, C A R E, you see the C. There are very there are a much smaller subset of letters that could be the second one after that. Right? That's poor entropy. That's why past phrases. I'm sorry, Russell Monroe. I'm sorry, XKCD. Horse staple does not work. It's not good. You want something that's random. Now, how should you make a random password? You, I mean, ideally, you'd generate it with your password manager, but then you're going to have to memorize Q3794184242 question mark, and nobody can memorize that. Right. What do you do for your last pass, master password? I actually used the built-in uh, macOS keychain very smart tool to make oh a that's so smart password for my one password i should mention that by the way your apple keychain is doing the same thing one password does it generates a second secure key which it stores in the hardware secure enclave that's why you have to when you create a, a new device you have to get that you have to get the approval from an existing mm -hmm. device that's what's going on there that's actually a better way to do it you don't have to store it yourself your phone or your mac stores it 
and transmits it over. Apple's doing that, and they should do that because most people's login password, which unlocks the keychain, isn't good. Right. You don't want a 31-character login. Yeah, you're having to type the whole thing yeah. in. Yeah, mine's not good. It's, it, you know, and even Apple says, oh, that strength is terrible. <laughs> that is not, so that's why Apple does that, and they should do that. Um, I think you're very smart. You use Apple's very good keychain password manager mm -hmm. to it just generate. Makes a really, it's, it's a really good generator because they have one, they have an option that's called memorable. But memorable, well, hold on, I know. Memorable does not mean English words. It means that. Letters. It, think of it like. Uh, the I make up a word now, chlorbop72 uh, thangsty. Those aren't real words, but I can remember chlorbop72 thangsty. remember, T-H, thangsty. That's true, T-H. H often comes after a T in mm -hmm. the English language. So entropy is lower for that H. So ideally, if it's so memorable... you think it should be GR... Your it shouldn't be memorable. One character However, password. and this does lower the entropy, but, but marginally, you could use... For instance, the first letters of a phrase. Ah. So let's say your phrase is to be or not to be. That is the question. Yeah. If your password, master password, were the number two and the letter B, the, the letter O, N, the number two, B, T, I, T, Q. And you could even use some uh, commas in there. That's a good start. If you can remember it, commas. If you can remember intercap, things like that. And then, still short, add something else. Because longer is better. There's another thing Steve taught us. He has a page called Password Haystacks. Even if it was 20 periods, that's a lot better than just 2B2. Two two. So what I do is I create a phrase that I can remember, mm -hmm. but that generates an acronym, the, first, the initialisms, the first letters of each phrase, using some rules that only I know about mm -hmm. punctuation and capitalization. And then that's even not enough. I add some numbers, and I'll give you an example of what you might want to do. Your childhood phone number, but the first three digits, and then put your childhood zip code and the last four digits. Now, you've got, what is that, 12 pretty random numbers. Mm -hmm. Adding that 12 things is a huge improvement. So if you combine this acronym initialism thing with a number or something that you just know. And by the way, that thing will be useful to add to other passwords later. Like if you want other memorable passwords, yes. keep that number around. I can remember my childhood phone number, right? Everybody's drilled into yes. this kid. So, but, but it's going to be hard to figure out what that is. And that by itself is still not enough, right? You have to have that, have to know how you've entangled it with other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it is possible to generate a good long, strong password. If you do that, then you don't need to pay for and go through the rigmarole of one password's secret password um, because you've already got an impossible password to begin with. Turn up your, your derivatives to the PBKDF2 to as high a number as you can stand. 600,000 is minimum. 300,000, I guess. It's OWASP's recommendation. What is OWASP? So I don't remember the initials. It's a nice security group. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now the problem is not you. You're watching our show. You're smart. You know how to do this. The problem is friends and family, especially if you have a family LastPass or a family, you know, password manager, mm -hmm. because they're going to all be in it too. And we have this problem here. We use LastPass Enterprise for the for the company, and uh, and um, Russell, our IT guy, <laughs> just had to send out a second email saying, "You guys, I told you to change your passwords." Mm -hmm. <laughs> please do that and he has to go through all because of this problem has to go through all of our passwords i forgot i had them. a LastPass account i know i never i never i use never it. use you it do. i yeah, never use it just but for I the did, company but <laughs> i changed it and i did what you did i generated a password for it in bitwarden yeah stored it in bitwarden so i have to remember it so it's very very secure same and i have to bother russell anyway that's the uh the sermon again uh two weeks in a row is about passwords but this it's is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And so t tell your family members, don't reuse passwords. Come up with a, a good, long, strong master password using a technique. You know, somebody once said, that, that, here's another good one. Uh, the presidents of the United States, older folks can remember this. Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson. They can remember that. But don't use the words. Use the first letters and uppercase the Republicans or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's, again, a mnemonic, something you can remember 
You won't remember the password probably, but you can recreate it as you go. Know.